Today we're looking at some items that you can find vintage versions, new versions. It does not matter. The price of these can still be very high no matter when they were made. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at something that you can find out there. I can promise you these types of items do show up. We're going to be talking about cross stitch. Now that's something my mom did, other people in my family as well. I remember seeing that sort of thing in the house when I was a child. You're going to find it at a lot of garage sales, estate sales, flea markets in general. We've also found a ton of these types of items at thrift stores routinely. We can find them new. We can find ones that were actually already done. We can find the kits, the whole works. Now you can sell the thread. You can sell tapestry, the fabric, the canvas that these are actually stitched onto. Now they usually come in tubes these days or you can buy some major sheets. So let's delve a little bit into this and show you the broad range of items that you can run into out there right this minute. Now, one of the more common items in cross stitch that I run into, including something that I just found framed just like this, are samplers. Now, most people assume samplers are only found um, way back in the day, colonial era and things like that. If you watch, say, Antique Roadshow or something like that, you'll see some samplers on there that sell for thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars in some cases. Most of the ones that you will find out there are nowhere ever going to be near those types of, of numbers. But even a common one of just the alphabet, no names, no dates, you can still get 50 to 75 bucks for it. Even in a frame, even if the frame's not very nice, people collect them. It's a whole genre in of itself where people will collect these. I've seen walls of these in people's houses before, just 30, 40, 50 of them all over their walls. Not all worth a fortune, but they're all nicely done. Now, one other thing on these samplers here, which a lot of people miss, is even if they are new, even if somebody just did them yesterday, if they're well done, they will still sell. We're going to show you some interesting items like that. There are people out right now who cross-stitch as a living. That's all they do. Believe it or not, you can dig into it. You will find others out there that do that as well. So there's quite a few people that can just make a living by doing this. We're going to show you some items tied to this. Not just cross-stitching itself, but there's a whole field of stuff tied to cross-stitching too. This item here went for $217. It's a nice piece here. It's interesting. The ones with names on them and towns and dates are always the best because you can identify where it's at. You can track down the history of the person who actually did it in many cases based on dates and time frames. Now here is a alphabet sampler here. You can see how it goes into various different styles and patterns of stitch work. And again, that's why it's called a sampler. Now way back when in this country, young girls would actually be taught this at schools and places like that. If you find one from a very specific place, that can add to the value as well. This one sold for fairly decent for 225 bucks. Many times I will find these literally still mounted on a wall at a estate sale and ask to buy it. It's usually fairly cheap if they're not dated or they just don't assume they're worth much money if they're in a newer frame. Now some are our mottos like this one here, a statement, uh, a quote from something, a small poem, and it has a nice home view image on the face of it as well. 225 bucks. Again, you're going to find these framed. I've bought some of these framed just like this at Savers before they closed around here. I see them at Goodwill occasionally too. Five, ten bucks I'll invest in some just like this. They do sell extremely well, especially if they're in good condition. The eye appeal is why these sell for so much money. Another aspect with these, the language that it's in doesn't matter or where it actually came from. Lovely work as well. You can tell it's vintage just by looking at the style of the text and you can see it's from a foreign location. Still went for well over $200 here. This is typical, again, framed. Most of these are framed. Now I do take these out of the frame if I'm going to sell them to make sure they're legit, to make sure there isn't something else going on. And one other thing I would say is always open up the frames because probably one out of six, one out of seven times, I find stuff in these older style frames like this 
just buried behind it. I found birth certificates, uh, death records, photos, other items as well, like other cross stitch and things like that. So I never ever sell anything without actually looking in the frame itself. Now dated ones are always nice, as I said. They will add to the value for sure, especially if it's an early date like this one from 1839. This is a silk one and it's Dutch. Really nice in my opinion here. Usually the dates are at the bottom. They're usually split up as well. So you'll have 18 on one side and 39 on the other. Now this one went for a lot more than the other ones because of the age, the age. It's very nice as well. Some of the coloring has faded. It still went for 790 bucks. Here's yet another fine example of a sampler. Early for sure, you can see the stylization of the characters, of the imagery on it. It's early 19th century is how they've dated. That would be say 1820s, 30s, 40s, somewhere in that range. 327 bucks. Now another thing to think about too, size isn't always a considering factor here. Samplers themselves never were huge because it was something a child would do. Many of these were just done by a seven-year-old, a nine-year-old, a ten-year-old. You'll find adults who do them as well too and you'll find people doing reproductions of them right now and selling them as reproductions. Even the reproductions can still sell in the same price ranges as the originals. They'll be brighter, they'll be more more displayable they'll be more eye appealing eye catching the new ones that's why they sell it's still a piece of artwork whether it's new or old here's yet another one in just one color kind of like the silhouette here this one's from 1913 it sold for almost 140 bucks now one other thing on these i usually iron them if they are loose like this usually does a little better when they are ironed there's no distracting factors or shadows on the image it's still a nice one either way you go it's not super old but it's nice condition still went for a pretty good price almost 140 bucks now as i said most of these are done by children so some of them aren't very advanced some of the actual graphics on them really aren't very well developed like this one here probably done by someone small someone younger another thing you consider sometimes it was just kids doing this at home just to see if they could do it it wasn't an actual class they saw another one somewhere and the parents had some fabric and some thread and they try to do it on their own so even these sorts even though it doesn't look very nice it's not very well orchestrated on here it still went for well over a hundred bucks though alphabet samplers are highly sought after there are other types out there ones not involving actual lettering itself now this style here I really like. I love the fact that this is all stitched into there. Someone spent the time to get those patterns correct. Probably had to draw it out ahead of time. This is a well orchestrated one. The work on this one is very fine. 1901 on this one, well over a hundred bucks as well. Loose framed, it doesn't really matter. On these types of things, I pay five, ten, fifteen, twenty dollars. I've paid as much as seventy-five for a couple of really nice ones before too. So price wise, I don't mind sinking the money into it if the value is there. Now this one here is a reproduction. Now you can actually buy reproduction, uh, not necessarily kits, but the booklets with the patterns to do this. There are some computer programs which we're going to show you that go for thousands of dollars that are designed where you can actually just scan in an image and it will convert it actually to a pattern that you can print out. Those patterns sometimes, a pattern to say, do this cross stitch here, could cost you two or three hundred dollars. So there are people out there invest in the equipment and they'll make their own cross stitch right now. Now there's another aspect you'll see on some of the kits like this, and I think I've got one saved in here to show you also. You'll see hand-painted canvas cross-stitch kit listed in the title here on eBay. Now hand-painted canvas. Someone has taken the time, they designed their own cross-stitch pattern, and then they painted the design on with matching colors onto the canvas so that when you stitch it, it's already filled in so you're not going to mess up the design. Those types of patterns and kits for cross stitch cost a few hundred dollars in most cases. Just the fabric, like the piece of fabric for this one new could cost you 30 or 40 bucks as well. So there's money involved in this for sure. There's a lot of companies who make a ton of money, millions and millions of dollars just producing these sorts of things as well. Now though I'm showing you samplers, cross stitching can be used on all sorts of things. I found pillowcases in the pantry at an estate sale before. Individual pillowcases sometimes you can get a couple hundred bucks for 
before if the cross stitching the stitchery in general is fine and nicely detailed this is a really nice tablecloth here now the main flowers like the rose there is all cross stitch now some of them have like a applique almost like fabric added to the top as well things like this a tablecloth like this can go for hundreds I've seen tablecloths that were completely cross stitch that went for thousands of dollars so it does not have to be something framed on a wall it doesn't have to be a sampler I always check the linen cabinets of every single state sale I always check the linen boxes at flea markets church sales especially now as I said you can get a computer program that will actually do it it will convert your images you can take a photo and convert it into cross stitch and some of those when you complete them the actual completed cross stitch can go for hundreds of dollars and you're able to make more than just one now this is masterworks 3 this is just one of the programs that you could run into out there right now now many people may look at something like this out in the wild in a dirtier beat up box and assume it's not worth much money even just the software itself a CD-ROM or something like that can go for some pretty good money box or not this one went for fifteen hundred dollars new a used copy can go for nine hundred dollars even so any of the programs that do cross stitch that will digitize it will transfer it transpose it into cross stitch colors where you can go to the store and take the color list from that and just get all the exact threads that you need to produce the image that you scanned those things all go for some incredible amounts of money there's actually machines that will actually do cross stitch for you as well an embroidery machine basically and some of those machines are insanely high priced but they do fanciful work like this some of these can actually be run in small machines again there will be people that will paint the canvas to match this and make their own kits and sell them out of their garage their basement their bedroom wherever it is they do honestly sell you will find tons of cross stitch just the pattern booklets going for some fairly good money my wife spots some as gifts for other people as well and they all do sell now along with kits they make them for all sorts of topics Walt Disney can go for some pretty darn good money just a booklet of Disney cross stitch patterns we've sold for 50 and 60 bucks quite regularly whenever we run across it I always go to crafter sales because I find die cut items I also find Dresden items and I always find stitchery related items like these sorts here now this is a Thomas Kincaid and this is a Disney one this is Winnie the Pooh 2 so the second one the first one is fairly common but the second one they did not make as many of this one did sell with many many bids for over a thousand bucks now a completed version of this one right here can sell for hundreds of dollars now another thing to consider with cross stitch if they're kits they sell extremely well during the winter months a lot of people are in the house and that's when the prices go way up for these if they're holiday related ones they can go for some incredible amounts of money as well far more than most other ones now this is one that someone's done a whole bunch of it they didn't finish the bottom so the bluish area here on the bottom of the sock is not complete for the area where the snow is on the roof that's the part not done the Santa Claus himself and the starry night and the bells that's all actually done so someone's selling a partially done one and it still went for 464 bucks because it's well done somebody will probably finish this off this is made to be cut out and then stitched onto a Christmas stocking that would be hung from the fireplace a mantle or something so the boots the stockings those cross stitch ones go for some good bucks a couple hundred bucks for most elaborate detailed ones like this one here you can see the price and you see it has more than one bid obviously now this one here is for a Christmas tree skirt and this is just a kit so a kit new just like this that you will still have to stitch put together in the whole works went for 400 bucks free shipping but that's just a small aspect in what this is this is a very nice very unique old world style Santa in a blue coat now the bigger the item the bigger the cross stitch pattern itself the bigger the object the more it will be a skirt for a Christmas tree is a fairly large object if I ran into the completed version of this it would still sell for four or five hundred dollars maybe even more because of the work that goes in to doing this type of thing it's huge it's big we have sold Christmas tree skirts for hundreds of dollars I've seen some Christmas tree skirts that were all cross stitch that went for almost a thousand bucks as well
Now here's a unique one here to say the least, and it went for almost 340 bucks. Someone has designed and cross-stitched a full-fledged Monopoly board. It's in a frame here as well. Somebody took some time to lay this one out to say the least. Now obviously, legally wise, you could not create kits of this one here because Parker Brothers, I do believe, is who still owns the actual copyright to the Monopoly one. Anyway, that's what I have for you today. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. What in the world are they up to now? Let's get right down to business. Business? What business? Our business! The Fun Pack Carry All Action Playset by Marks. Look, this opens up the wild action world of Fort Apache. With Indians, cavalrymen, shell shooting cannons. And here are the fighting knights with a real drawbridge, knights, vikings, and rock throwing catapults. Here's the boot camp with tent. Jeep bullet shooting machine guns and 80 soldiers. Or land a helicopter at Cape Kennedy. Fire the rockets, back the space missile into the launching pad, and start the countdown. It's off into space. Zoom! Get Port Apache. Get the Fighting Knights. Get the Boot Camp. Get Cape Kennedy. Get all four and carry your own world of action wherever you go. The Rugged Steel Carry All Action Playsets by Marks.